Sure. Hey, Jackie, I am so glad you're here. We have had to pivot so many times to actually get you on this interview. And yeah. we're thankful for just God's grace. And we can use Zoom to record this and yeah. get information to women. So thank you for Zoom having is faithful. Thank you for, uh, <laughs> for sticking it out. Yeah. Well, just a quick introduction. Um, I know you're a mom of almost four. When mm -hmm. are you due with your fourth? Uh, in three months. So January 5th. And a little boy. Yes. Got three girls and a boy. Finally. I have to tell you that all my friends who have followed you, they were like, she's having a boy. Everybody, everybody's rejoicing with you guys. So this is like a holy celebration. People are it, pumped about it, this. It's going to be fun. I don't even know what it is like to have a son, even I to know. say it. I know I have two boys. So I'm like, I don't know the girl side when my mm. friends, you know, with all their girl stuff, I'm like, I don't know, but I know the craziness of boys and just the best. Um, both of them are. So yeah. you are, you're a wife, a mom, poet, a writer, a speaker, um, probably other things that I'm not even saying. Um, and you just wrote a book holier mm -hmm. than now, which is so good. I literally purchased this like the day that it came out and, um, was excited that I actually found it in the bookstore. Mm -hmm. So we're having you on for our first things interviews. We have been talking to women about what does it mean to put Christ first in our lives? Um, to prioritize him rather than canceling him in our schedules. Um, I think we can come to our time with God with a mentality of this is something that I have to do, or we come to it with the mentality of, I don't have time for it. I'm going to like squeeze it in here and there mm -hmm. when really, I mean, as you've even gone through in this book, who God is and his character and, um, his nature requires him to be first in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so first, um, we're just going to start with a fun question first, kind of before we go into these deeper questions. So first, are you a morning or a night person? Um, I know that it probably looks different with kids mm -hmm. and you're about to have a fourth, you're pregnant, so you're probably not sleeping great, but yeah. um, are you a morning or a night person? Before children, uh, I was definitely a night person. I, yeah. I prefer it. Now I'm, I'm, I'm starting to, I'm tired around nine ish. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've had to become a morning person, but I will say uh, my daughter, we have to get up at six 30 to take uh, my oldest to school. Yeah. And I do feel more productive. Yeah. Like I feel like I can get more done because it's like, I'm up already. So yeah. Well, Creativity you know. wise. Do you feel like, um, like with writing mm -hmm. is morning a better time for you to create or night? Oh, for sure. Cause my brain is fresh me too and so you know around noon a little after <laughs> lunch it like dissipates I, the rest of the I day started to get I started to get a little foggy so absolutely i feel you so what time do you normally wake up what is your morning routine look like yeah. for you well now the school has started i wake up at 6 30. i get the, the the young the oldest dressed we go her school is 40 minutes from us okay so we drive 40 minutes to school and then usually um, I take care of whatever I have to take care of in that time, um, yeah. whether that's interviews, podcasts, I'm not writing right now. I have school on Tuesdays, uh, so I'll do some homework, some reading, all the things, yeah. and then I'm, I'm present by three. So even though I'm self-employed, I've yeah. created a schedule so that, you know, I'm not just working all day long, but right. after three, I'm home and I'm, I'm, I'm not cooking right now because I don't feel like it, but typically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be cooking something. Yeah, totally understand. Um, that's kind of similar to my schedule. About three is my cutoff when my boys are home and it's like, all right, we're going back into mom mode now. Yep, yep, um, yep. So when, like in all of that time, when do you have your time with the Lord? What does that look like for you normally? It's still so all over the place. Yeah. It, it feels like uh, because every, every day is so different. So like even for okay. today, right? Uh, got up at 630 was uh dropped Eden off at 7 45 yeah. and then I was like okay I'm gonna go get some coffee but while I uh when I got to the coffee place I was like huh I should just sit in the car and read and yeah. so I just sat in the car and read through Luke you just <laughs> had so your bible that, with you just like in ready my to phone. Go. I yeah. was like this is this is the time and so yeah. I think the spontaneity of it can be unhelpful yeah at times because that's when you kind of get lost in your day without you know again making God a priority 
but it was like, it was good because it was peaceful and there was no distractions. And I felt like I was able to think and pray and meditate um, in a way that I would not have been able to if I came home. Right. So yeah. in that moment too, most of the time we have like a free moment. We don't normally pull up Luke on our phones. We pull up <laughs> social media or our emails or the news yeah, or I did that too. whatever, you know, whatever it is. And so you just wrote this book on the holiness of God and why should the holiness of God motivate us to put him first, you know, in that moment for you to go, you know, this is the time I have like no kids. It's quiet for a minute. And I can actually, you know, use social media for good or, you know, use my phone for good and read the book of Luke right now. Yeah. Well, I think, um, if we take Isaiah six, for example, Isaiah sees the vision of the Lord high and lifted up. Uh, he is the Lord of hosts. His whole glory fills the earth. And he, he recognizes that he's king, that he's Lord. Um, and even recognizing him as Lord and king is to recognize his preeminence over all things. Right. That like it's the Christ him. Like he is before all, all things. things. Yeah. And, and so I, I think a part of us putting God before everything is really acknowledging the reality that he already is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think our lack of submission and our rebellion and our, our laziness and all the things is really us living in this kind of false reality that everything else matters more than God, which isn't true. And so I think it, it, it takes a level of humility to say, no, I'm going to like reconcile reality with my faith. Right. And say, no, you are preeminent. You are better than all the things. And yeah. I think a motivator is if God is king, if God is Lord, if God is transcendent, if God is uh, the supplier and satisfier and fulfiller of all of my needs, if he is the one that sanctifies me, perfects me, then I need him. Right. And so my neediness then propels me to say, even if I don't want to put you first, even if I don't yeah. want to seek you, yeah. I need to. Um, and so I think one of my biggest battles in all of us, I think, is self-sufficiency. Yeah. Um, believing that everything else is able to fulfill and sustain me more than God is. So, yeah. And, you know, I'm reading your book and one of the chapters on idolatry, I feel like you, you just said that God is transcendent. We're not putting him in his place because he's already there. Mm -hmm. He's already first. He's already preeminent. He has always been, he always will be. There's nothing and nobody else who compares to God, who has that same character of transcendence and preeminence. And so it's, you know, it's putting our mind and our schedules, our hearts to where we recognize that. I love that you said bringing our faith into the reality that already is. Mm -hmm. So knowing, you know, the holiness of God, you know, we, you talk about it's God is set apart, you know, to cut, that's the word that, um, you know, with holiness, like he is, he is other than us. Mm -hmm. He is not like us, set apart from us. He's totally other from us. So how does his otherness, his holiness impact how we approach the mm -hmm. throne of grace, how we approach our time reading our Bibles and, you know, yeah. spending time with him, being in church and fellowship? How does that impact that? That's a great question, because I, I think holiness and even terms like transcendence, right? <laughs> it, it feels so, uh, it feels like it lacks practicality. Right. Uh, where it's like, yeah, okay, but what does that have to do with right. my life on Thursday at 4 p.m.? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what it does is, even when you think about how uh, God says uh, through the writer of Hebrews, uh, in your time of need, come to my throne of grace for help, mm. right? Right. When you consider the fact that uh, God's throne of grace is not present in my room, but God is. Why? Because God himself is not restrained by space or time. Right. And so even the way God exists, which reveals his transcendence, that he is above and beyond everything, it means that, oh, I have a transcendent God that I always have access to. Yeah. So I always have access to his throne of grace in my room, right. in my car, at Target, at it Hobby is. Lobby, at Applebee's, wherever. That's one of the really, I think, simple ways to say, oh man, because God exists, differently than everything that exists that means that he's able to meet my need and I'm able to seek him under terms that I would not otherwise have for example right. if we believe that people 
are the main suppliers and satisfiers, not suppliers, but uh, sustainers of our needs, right. then we are always going to be limited. Right. Because we are always going to need them to be present, yeah. to pick up their phone, to be woke, to be yeah. in a certain area code for us to have access to them for help. But God is saying, no, it doesn't matter if you're on Mars. doesn't matter if you're in Montana. doesn't yeah. matter if it's 2 a.m. doesn't matter if it's 2 p.m. <laughs> I am always available. Yeah. Always. Yeah. <laughs> so I, think, I think that's really, it's a big deal when you really tap into it. Yeah. Well, and people aren't available to us, so they disappoint us. Like, I, I mean, have you ever called somebody and you're like, answer the phone and they're not answering the phone. They're not available to you. So you're disappointed or upset. Like God is other than that. He yep. is accessible at all times. I mean, we approach the, th the throne of grace because of Christ's sacrifice for us. He has made a way for us to come boldly at any moment, at any time. Mm -hmm. And so how do you do that? Um, well, I, I have two questions. Um, one, we've talked a little bit about meditation and, and I feel like um, you said you meditated on, you know, Luke two or Luke chapter and Luke this morning. Um, but to really grasp this, you don't grasp this in a moment. You mm -hmm. don't grasp the fact that God is accessible at any time. I mean, we're finite creatures. We forget so quickly. And, um, that's one thing, one of the things that I've learned about is the importance of meditating on the character of God, because my mind cannot comprehend mm -hmm. his presence, his accessibility. Um, you know, through Christ, I can't just comprehend that in a moment. And I think that we can read a book like this, you know, and go, Oh, I'm done. And then walk away. But really this is something that impacts us every day. And so how do we meditate on that? I mean, do you make that a part of, of your life? Cause I feel like to really even grasp this book and to write it, you had to wrestle. I mean, you had to, you, you weren't able to just pick up the Bible, read one verse and write this. I mean, I'm sure this was <laughs> countless hours and just years. anguish and years. Yeah, yeah. Years. So how can we encourage women to think deeply on the things of God? Um, mm -hmm. when there's so many, so many things just vying for our attention at all times. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's such an important thing to bring out. Um, especially in a day and age when we are, we move on so quickly, right? you know, uh, yeah. whether it's social media or, you know, now we can fast forward commercials, like it's just fast yeah. food, like we're, we're at such a fast pace all the time that even the way we engage with the Bible uh, mm -hmm. is impacted by that. Right. And I, what I've seen is that I think having um, this, an impatient kind of spirit towards right. how you read and deal with the scriptures, will affect you, the depth yeah. that you have yeah uh, and even the, the 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 ways in which your mind is renewed and so i think meditation is really it's okay to be still yeah and it's okay to to open up a text and and so if it's uh something about you know uh he, God, he who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all i could ever ask or think the immediate thing is oh awesome cool yeah. let me tweet that and yeah. then we move on. Right. But I think a part of the meditation is, okay, let me go throughout my day yep. thinking through that. And yeah. so when a, when a stressor comes where, you know, you got a bill and it's like, what am I going to do with this bill? Okay. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ever ask or think. Okay. My kids, they're, they're getting on my nerves and they're doing all these things and I feel so overwhelmed. I feel so needed. All right. He who is in me can, he is able to do exceedingly <laughs> and abundantly above Hey, yeah. husband, friend, what do you think about the passage? He, he can do exceedingly and abundantly above. And then they give you their thoughts. And, and, right. and then you listen, let me Google some songs. About yeah. this. And so I think music, community, yeah. trials, situations, all of that creates opportunity for our minds and our hearts to be shaped by one passage. And so I think that's a part of meditation. It's just saying that, look at all of what happens throughout your day and take use of the people that you know that love Jesus and his word too. Um, and I think that that just changes you and it just, yeah. it does a thing. It does. And, and it's, I mean, what you just gave as an example is filtering your thoughts and your circumstances, all the situations you face through God's word, because yeah. we can, we can say that we can tweet that Instagram that all day long. Like he is, you know, abundantly able to do all the, like mm -hmm. we can, we can tweet that and just be like, man, this is good. And then, you know, you go to the doctor and they tell you something that you're like, what? 
And you're immediately, you know, the first response, doubt God, be angry with God, you know, and forget this word that he has given us that is true, even in that circumstance that maybe it feels impossible. Maybe it feels um, contrary to his nature, but Mm -hmm. we know that we know that we know that God is who he says he is. He is, I am. He isn't, I was, he isn't, I I, I just will be like, he is, I am. Yeah. And that's who we trust and that's who we approach in these moments. So for you, you, you're busy, Jackie. I mean, like from the outside, it definitely seems like you're busy just a little bit. Um, yeah. Not only with your kids right now, your home is, you know, you had flooding in your home. Like you're about to have a baby. You just wrote a book, you're traveling <laughs> and speaking. So in this, you know, in this somewhat busy season of life, how do you redirect your gaze to the Lord? I mean, as you are, Cause I know like, even when as a working mom, you're working until this three o'clock and then yeah. it's hard to switch off all the yeah. things, you know, and go into mom mode. And then just to, to really take what you have wrestled with and mold over, mm-hmm. you know, for these past few years, and then you get into the busyness and it's easy to become forgetful or distracted. So how do you, um, bring your gaze back to the Lord when those things start to come at you? It's not easy, and I and I don't think I'm doing it perfectly, yeah. uh, to be honest, um, because every season is, it, that was one of the blessings, honestly, of last year of the pandemic, is that I was so bored. Like, I, <laughs> I, I really did not have a lot to do, but it yeah. was so good for my mental, emotional, and mental and emotional health, um, yeah. that just that kind of forced Sabbath right if you will and so now that everything has gotten busier again um I think I'm kind of fighting really to again to put Christ first and to make sure that I'm not running on fumes yeah because I I think when you when you go to seminary and you go to church and you know all the things you can kind of run on the fumes of last week's word yeah or last year's revelation and all the things And it's like, no, like you need new manna. Yeah. Like you you, you need it every day. And so I guess the way God has kind of forced it in a way, because my circumstances are so all over the place. Like my house is in shambles because it was flooding. Right. 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 Like I have the IRS like, hey, (laughs) you owe us some back taxes. Like I didn't even know that was my my accountant's job. It's it's all these things that are actually creating where God is like, yeah, I'm kind of allowing your world to be in such a way that you're reminded of how much you need me. Right. You know? Um, and then I think um, being honest with my husband and saying, hey, I can I have this space of time? Right. right? And I know that's not everybody. So, some people are single, some people are widowed and all the things. But for me, it's, yeah. I need an hour. Yeah. Can I have that? Yeah. And I'm not saying can like he, but I'm saying, hey, can you take the kids and yeah. the dog and all the things? And so I think just, I don't know, I'm not answering your question well. But you are, you're, one of the things that you're showing too, is that you don't arrive in this, you know, like you can even, you know, I released my first book this year and a lot of it is about this putting Christ first and everything. And it's been hard the past few months. I mean, Mm -hmm. we have had stuff come up, like, just because you write a book doesn't mean you've arrived. You have it all together just because you teach the Bible, travel and speak. No, like this is a part of the process that like even your growth in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ, you're being faithful in that, but it's, it's a day by day, moment by moment thing, you know, and in this season, like I have to do that with my husband too. go. I just, I need like an hour. Can you take the kids 60 minutes? And it's amazing what that does for a mom. (laughs) (laughs) It's like just that little bit. You're like, silence, you know, silence can be so loud, you know, because as a mom, I'm just used to noise constantly. So like you did answer the question. You showed that this is a moment by moment thing. There is no formula to it. And I want that as a Christian. Sometimes we want like, maybe Jackie will just say like the secret that I've been waiting for. Like she knows this secret, but really no, like you're just seeking the Lord where you are in this season. And you will be I think that's why it's hard to articulate because it really is a day by day thing. And I think the prayer has to be, okay, God, keep my heart Mm. so that 
as things do get busy and as things do get weird and as it becomes more complicated to right. seek you, I never get to the point where I start to forget how much I need you. Oh yeah. And, and how much you des- you deserve my body and my time and my mind. And so I think just maintaining that that heart of worship and that sensitivity yeah. to the spirit. And again, also having friends that can even identify, hey, your character is is yeah. you seem a little irritable. Like yeah. what's happening? And it's just yeah. like, girl, I ain't prayed in three days. Yeah. <laughs> you need those <laughs> you know? people to sit to see that. And yeah. call us out in it too. Yeah. Not just to see it and be like, oh, I'm going to back away from Jackie right now because she's in a mood, you know, mm. but that will press in and be like, hey. like, something. Yeah, I know your spiritual reservoir is, is, is leaking. Yeah. And really good friends don't just correct, but they also feel. Okay, yeah. Let me pray for you. What yeah. do you need? You want me to take the kids for a second? You know, yeah. here's a song. Listen to this. Oh, this is a great album. Here's a quote from this book. Like, I, I think there's this pairing of like, not on like not just a, a a rough here's the sin or potential sin but here's here's some, some courage here's yeah. some like hope here's some Jesus still got you you're gonna be all right that's so good um yeah I'm, I mean honestly the Lord is just leading in this this um interview with you because I feel like so many women need to hear that and and so right now in your life what's one spiritual discipline that you are really seeking to grow in um, what does that look for you, look like for you in this season? Hmm. Great question. Um, it might be solitude, silence and solitude. And I started to think through that during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I just, just the need to be quiet and to sit. And uh, one, one, one uh, passage that really got to me, that got me thinking that way is in Luke. <laughs> yeah. I think it's Luke, it's not Luke 4, but it's somewhere in there where yeah. it says as the crowd uh, grew and the, like his, Jesus became more famous, really, right. he would, would, would withdraw to desolate places yeah. and pray. And I was like, wow, like in the busyness and in the popularity and and he's being used, right? Like he's preaching and people are responding. He's, he's healing. He's, he's raising the dead. He's feeding yeah. people, but he would still withdraw to a quiet place yeah. to, to pray. And so I think that's a discipline that I'm trying to just create in my life. This, that, that's what I did in the car. It's yeah. like, let me read this Bible. Let me be quiet. Yeah. Let me withdraw from all the things in the car. And um, I think it's just, I don't know, I think it's healthy because the world is so noisy. Our minds are so noisy. And I, I think we need that more than we think. It's, that's so other to this world too, mm-hmm. because, you know, we're busy and busy becomes this, you know, like success. You, you equate busyness. Oh, if you're busy, it's a badge. you're doing good things. You're productive. You're moving forward, you know, and even in ministry, it's a dangerous badge because, Mm -hmm. you know, people can look and go, Oh, like maybe you weren't doing that. And on the inside, you're just shriveling up, you know, but on the outside, we can be doing so many good things for the Lord Mm -hmm. while our souls are shriveling because we're not spending that time with him. We're not, you know, we have to, the fuel to the fire doesn't come when you're on the stage. It comes when Mm -hmm. you're, you know, behind the scenes and nobody's Mm -hmm. looking and you're actually praying and talking Mm -hmm. to God and reading Mm -hmm. the word. But it's just so easy, I think, in today's culture for us to do the opposite and to think, yeah. you know, I'm doing these good things on the stage or whatever it is for, you know, whoever it is. Um, and we think that will fill us up. Mm-hmm. But like you said, like, we need that man of grace right now for today. Um, mm-hmm. And we can't survive off of, off of left, left, leftovers from yesterday. And we really need to deal with our people-pleasing problem. Yeah. Because that's what makes it hard in ministry is that you're so afraid to say no. Yeah. Because you don't want to, you know, look selfish or feel like I'm supposed to consider my brother as, as better than myself. And it's just right. like, yeah, but not at the expense of your spiritual life with God. That's right. not humility. That's pride. Yeah. You're afraid of what people will think about your Christianity if right. you say, no, I can't do that right now, you know? And so I, I think we, we, it's a, it's a fight to be a Mary 
when mm-hmm. it looks better like being to be a Martha. Yeah, it feels <laughs> better sometimes, you know? It does. Like, I'm so needed. I'm doing all these things. But no, sit yeah. at his feet. Yep. And we, we think it does though, which is funny because I said it feels better, but we think it does until you mm. pull back and you start to tend to that fire again in your soul mm. and spend that time alone with the Lord. And, you know, Jesus shows us, like you were saying that as ministry increases, as life gets busier, the demand, uh, you know, is just going to increase. And the mm. importance of us getting away to be with God is actually increased. You know, I I think of Martin Luther, he said, I have so much to do. You know, I'm going to spend the first three morning, three hours of the morning in prayer. That's my paraphrase of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, he's saying that, you know, I, the more that I have to do, the more need my soul has to get Mm -hmm. right with God and to be with him. So Mm -hmm. I I've been thinking about, um, Mueller's quote, you know, that he would spend the first moments of the day to have his soul be happy in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I'm not, I don't always wake up. I didn't wake up happy in the Lord this morning. I mean, just gut level honesty. Maybe, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just not there, you know, <laughs> but, um, but seeing that, like when we do come, you know, I'm never disappointed. I never mm-hmm. leave this time with the Lord and go, man, I wish I had checked social media instead of read that's my true. Bible. Uh, never, true. never. So, um, man, that's good. I honestly, we've done this you know, interview with several people, nobody has said silence and solitude as, (laughs) as the spiritual discipline. Cause it, it it is so, and I think that people think that, oh, just because I'm like, you, you're going to have four kids soon. Mm -hmm. I think some people would think, oh, that this is just not the season for that, but really we can make make game. Yeah. We have, I think it's a Piper quote where he says that on the final, on the last day, social media will reveal uh, how we did have time for prayer, something like that. Yep. I saw that recently. And I have a lot of time. I do. And it, and it doesn't have to be much. It could, it could simply be, you know, again, dropping the girls off from school or you're in a car on your way to a meeting. And right. instead of listening to a podcast or instead of, you know, talking on the phone with a friend, let's just, let's be silent and meet with God, even in that place. And so it's possible. Yeah. We have more time than we think. And that's coming, Mm -hmm. you know, just for people who are listening, coming from somebody who is, you know, you got a full plate, you know, and hearing you say that it's possible is the best reminder for us because Mm -hmm. we have to fight for that time. It's not going to just come to us. You know, we have to fight to turn our phone on airplane mode and, you know, to not go to that, like, you know, we're, we're just kind of wired to do these other things. Um, so, okay. One, one last question. Um, so the first things interview, all of this is coming from CS Lewis. He said that you can't get, um, first things, uh, wait, I'm going to say this wrong now that I'm, I've said it so many times. (laughs) You can't get setting second things by putting them first. You can only Mm -hmm. get second things by putting first things first. You know, he's talking about how we can't get all of these like things in this world that bring us joy by putting them first Christ, when he is first, when he is, you know, in our, when we are putting him in that preeminent place where he already is, then it affects everything in our lives. I mean, we Mm -hmm. then do have joy in our lives. We do have peace. And so for you, what are some second things that you find benefit in your life when you are consistently keeping Christ as your first priority? Mm. Me for one, yeah, (laughs) um, like my conscience, yeah, I, 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 I haven't done it. I wanted to do a study on the conscience because I started to notice how often Paul talks about it. Yeah. Where he's like, I, I say this with a clear conscience. Yeah. And I think being able to go through life with a clear conscience, mm. it, it just, there's some peace with that right. <laughs> and some joy. Uh, that's one too. Um, I think my, all of my relationships are affected with yeah. my husband, with friends with uh people I might interact with on the street where there is a you know how uh, Jesus says abide in me and you will bear much fruit that out of it comes uh this impulsive godliness and I get that language from Piper because I remember he said once that a lot of what God has to refine in us is not the godliness that we're able to plan for but the godliness that just comes out yeah just naturally yeah. somebody bumps into you or 
uh, someone says something that's triggering and your mouth just opens up. It's that impulsive godliness yeah. uh, that I think God wants to, to make more natural for us. Yeah. And so I think that's what I see. And um, I think my effectiveness in ministry. Mm. Uh, Paul also said like, you know, when you cleanse, uh, I'm gonna mess it up. So I ain't even gonna say it. But he said something about like forks and spoons and things. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and everything. Like, they, they become useful because they're clean. Yes. Yeah, and I, I think so much we're, we're so we know that we've been sanctified and we've been justified and we're going to be glorified. But it's like, no, like your holiness does affect your effectiveness. Right. And so I just I just become more clear sighted and more loving and more able to even discern things. And so all the things are affected. Yes. This is first. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I, I've never heard the impulsive godliness thing. Um, oh, it's, it, changed my, it changed everything for me. That's so good. And I mean, again, it's just like, this is the working of the spirit in us. When we are in his word, he does the transformation process. Mm -hmm. And you know, when that comes out and you're like, that was not me, like that goodness that came out was not me. That, right. that was the Lord. Right. Um, and that's when, you know, and when other people start to recognize that too, to see like, Hey, you used to respond like this. Mm -hmm. to this situation. And I see this difference. I mean, like, praise God for that. Yeah. Um, it's encouraging when you see it. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. Tell us a little bit more about your book. I mean, I've, I've mentioned it. Um, I don't know if you're working on any, any other projects because you're about to have another baby. You are growing a baby. That's the project that you're and I'm in class. I was like, I'm in, I'm in school. So let me. That's right. Get That's right. Up. Yeah. So this book, um, I mean, I highly recommend it to everybody listening, whoever I'm going to meet. Um, so is there anything else you want to kind of note about this book? I guess I'd just say that uh, what the reason I wanted to write Holier Than Thou, one is I'm just really curious about the nature of God right. and how that affects the way we behave and live and all the things. And I read a ton of books about holiness and many of them are helpful, but they also felt like uh, one, they landed more on the moral purity of God than anything. Right. And not also his otherness, his transcendence and all the things. Right. And it made me introspective in such a way that I think was unhelpful hmm. because it was God is holy, cannot sin. You're a sinner, gonna judge you. You might go to hell if you don't repent. And right. it was just like, okay, I kind of think holiness has to be bigger than that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and A.W. Tozer was one of the first books, The Knowledge of the Holy, that uh, as I read it, the way he talked about God's holiness, it not only educated me, but it stirred up my affections. Yeah. And, I, and so I was, so that's really was my approach to this book is how can I, by using and walking through the scriptures, show that holiness is not a scary thing, right. but that holiness really is another word for God's beauty yeah Th that that he is a good and wise and perfect and pure and other transcendent yet imminent right. god who loves us so much that he wants us to be like him which is a good thing and so yeah. it's just really me just saying hey y'all behold god he's bread he's good be filled that's amazing so that's well it. your your thought process you have this question that you kind of frame the book and it's on the mm -hmm. back of your book, but it's so good. Like it just sets it up. Um, if God can't sin, then he can't sin against you. If he can't sin against you, should not make him the most trustworthy being there is. And just that framing mm -hmm. changes how we view all of our circumstances mm -hmm. and heartache and suffering. Um, because I mean, the Bible, it's, it's a really a book about suffering. I mean, I, so many people oh, take sure. it out of context from Genesis to Revelation. I mean, you see the suffering of the saints, our suffering savior, mm -hmm. you know, that's our salvation comes through his suffering on our behalf. And our sanctification also comes through our suffering on this earth that we would be more like him, that we would know him, that we yeah. would worship him in holiness because, you know, the suffering that we do walk through, whether it be a flooded house or the loss of um, a loved one, mm. it it detaches us yeah. from all of these things that we think give us hope yeah. so that we can, you know, be grafted into the vine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I would help me to understand that or see that is in Jeremiah 2, God, when speaking with Israel, he says, what wrong 
did you find in me mm. that you left me and went wow. after worthlessness? And then in John six, Jesus says, hey, can any of you convict me of sin? Right. If not, why don't you believe me? And in both instances, you see the Godhead saying, if I am morally pure, if I am holy, then I am fully deserving of your faith. Right. <laughs> and so I think that is just a different way to frame it, where it's like, no, holiness is an incentive for us to believe that God is worthy of everything. Yeah, to trust him. Yep. I mean, it's, it's so good. So I want to thank you for writing this, um, yep. for just your ministry and for being faithful to the Lord behind the scenes so that your ministry does bear fruit um, mm -hmm. on the outer, you know, the things that you do outwardly. Amen. Thank you so much for having us or having us on. I don't know why. <laughs> Thank you so much for being faithful to show up to Instagram live a million times when it wouldn't work and do this. And thank you for enduring. Cause I mean, that was rough. Oh, well, I'm Instagram really Instagram doesn't like us, but it, it worked out on zoom. Maybe it doesn't, we would have been distracted or something. If we, we were still, we were still meant to be friends this way. Yeah. So praise the Lord. Well, thank you, Gretchen.